Ruben, can you explain what it's like to live on this small 53 foot boat? Uh, well, living on a yacht is a very crazy experience. It's uh, different to anything. You're both confined and yet totally free. Your, your space is limited, but what you do and the way that you live is really open to basically what you want to do. Living on a boat is like living in like a, a college dorm with like a bunch of your friends. Um, but the dorm is like constantly being thrown around and it's kind of a weird experiment. Like you're just kind of always being rolled around. Imagine if it was in like hydraulic lifts and it was just constantly moving around. So, so, so incredibly close with nature. The winds pushing or pulling us along, how comfortable we are depends on the state of the swell. Sunrise and sunset are the highlights of the day. Stargazing at night into a clear sky. I don't know, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that, you know, we are five people living in a, like a one ambience apartment kind of thing, and you're not allowed to leave the apartment for weeks at a time. <laughs> it's pretty intense. You're not on your phone and technology the whole time, so therefore you interact with humans a lot more. More talking going on, more debates going on. It's a very interesting social experiment, I think to put a lot of different people on a boat. A boat's a pressure cooker <laughs> because you actually can't leave. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. Usually, days on passage consist of exactly what you want them to. Mine normally starts with waking up next to the grub, hanging out at the helm for a two hour morning watch, making myself a hearty breakfast, sometimes followed by a little workout, and then I like to spend a solid chunk of time just chilling and reading. Every few days, we treat ourselves to a fresh water shower, which is always a treat. Everyone has their own little routine, but no matter how you choose to spend your days, one thing always remains the same. Time just moves a lot slower out here. And that's the way we like it. I know I can say these things because Delos is an incredibly sturdy boat. And the trust we have in her is a gift that allows us to have such an enjoyable passage. that much wind this morning. We were motoring when I came on watch and I've only been out here for half an hour or so. Um, we had a few more knots we could put out the sails and start sailing so fingers crossed that happens. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna check on weather right now. There's actually a couple ships around us which we haven't seen very much of out here so it's good to know that other life exists 
and yeah, just enjoying myself watching the sunrise and I think it's going to be another good day out here. Oh, you've never met anyone so outrageous If you ain't like me, don't know how you couldn't take it Darling, you will never meet another bird that sings like me Oh, my God, I'm just in a place to have a sail I'm gonna put some sail out Turn off the motor, see what happens Sings like me I only got one flaw that I think I'm perfect But she ain't like me she ain't worth it, darling. You will never meet another bird that sings like me. With all your tails, the arm my chest on the prettiest bird in the whole wild west, darling. You will never meet another bird that sings like me. No, no, you will never meet another heart sliding free. Well, lately I've been thinking. I won't love nobody else It makes me wonder where else I should go No, lately I've been thinking I don't need nobody else Oh yeah, we just picked up even more Seven knots, six knots, yeah we're good Good to go Engine off Yee-hoo! We're sailing again! Too shy. It's a mizzen out. <laughs> Oh, you've never met anyone so outlandish If you ain't like me, don't know how you could stand it Darling, you will never meet another bird that sings like me Got my hands clamped tight on my coffee cup Got the gold in my eyes and the cute little bow Darling, you will never meet another bird that sings like me Yes, and bless your eyes and your one step film If I break your heart, girl, then no one will Darling, you will never meet another bird that sings like me Get me too wound up and I'ma leave you bloody on oh, This is as hell to me, it tastes like honey Darling, you will never meet another bird that sings like me No, you will never meet another hound that bites like me That's when you know Delos is nice and balanced Dead center Such a good feeling. <laughs> You're on a good course, you have good wind, both super balanced, and the sun's rising right in front of you. I don't think it gets much better than that. <laughs> Love it. Ooh. Ooh. Love it. It's so cool when the boat's just balanced and it's just doing its thing. You're just kind of monitoring it, but she's exactly where she should be. So in the first 93 hours, we've gone 500 miles, so that's an average of 5.37 knots, which isn't too bad. And we have 1,184 miles till the Azores. One of my favorite parts about long passages is being able to take the time to catch up on Z's. So while Blue is enjoying her morning solo sail, 
us boys were hard at work, napping and resting for the moment we knew would eventually come our way. Something breaking. What's going on, Brady? All of a sudden, the, the out haul for the main isn't working. So I'm just checking the relay for it. And the relay, relay clicks over and there's definitely 24 volts coming out of the relay. It could be jammed, the motor, so we're just gonna try and manually mess with it. Okay. We're gonna lock the end of the out haul out, so that way if we ease this up here, the sail won't just go and be loose. So to keep it pulled out and tight. Yeah, because when I, when I loosen that set pin there, the tension is gonna come out real quick. What I was trying to do was to, to unseize the, the motor by easing the tension off of the actual um, teeth mm -hmm. that hold it, but it didn't, didn't really do anything. I think what we did last time is we put we put a block down there and then run it to uh, run the line up to this winch up here. Okay, uh, tension. Okay, hold it. Next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this case off here. And I want to test to make sure that this motor is getting 24 volts, or else that breaker down there could be bad. Oh. Well, we opened it up and the wires seem to have come off, so I, I hope that they were off before we took the cover off, and taking the cover off didn't pull them out. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you. That's it? That's it. That's it. The wires what? came loose. How did those come out? I don't know, but... It could have been... Something grabbed the wire. Maybe when we pulled on the wire. Yeah, maybe when we were going wing on wing, it was pulling this wire a little bit too tight. All right. Well, good news. Yeah. Well, let's get it together and get it hooked back up. Yeah. Before we get too excited. Before we get too excited. <laughs> Hold it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now the way. Okay. Back in action. Well, it's been how long since meat? One month. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like a week ago. You had pizza in my Yeah, we had pepperoni It's been like pizza. four days. Four days. But we've been cutting way back because we decided on this trip that the only meat we were going to eat on the boat is stuff that we actually caught on the boat. So, we be fishing today. Yeah. Look, we got a fish dance going on. There we go. We haven't fished in a really long time because our hearts really haven't been into it and the oceans are pretty But it's probably the most sustainable thing that you can do being out at sea. So now's the time. I know this, this lure has already been named the tuna executioner. But we have a tradition on Dallas that we name new lures when we make them. What's the first word that comes to your head? One word. Mighty. And first word. First. Yeah. The mighty orange, orange slayer. That is the perfect, perfect name for it. We introduce you the mighty orange slayer. <laughs> come on, mahi. Come on, mahi, mahi. So what's the concept of this bad? Now you have the blue line attached to the boat. This is your fish alarm. Yeah. We take this and we put all of the tension of the lure oh, on this. And then when a fish bites, it'll go. We're gonna listen to that. Yeah. We'll watch it. It's a little bit louder. Normally it'll be like a, a proper pop. Yeah. Cool, man. I'm excited. Okay, Brad. Boat is in your hands. What's up? Is that squall blow up the wind, which is great if we are out of the northeast. And we are back on course, uh, doing the nice eight knots, balanced up, not too much wind home, but yeah, it's nice and balanced. Cruising, bro. And we're cruising. This is what sailing is all about. Perfect racing wind conditions. Love it. Get some GoPros on, 
to get the action because there's a lot of big waves that are crashing into the Got super cold. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but it's so fun. Something that's pretty cool about Delos actually is that because the cockpit's so protected, you can be out here when it's blowing like 30, 35 knots. And I mean, every once in a while a big wave will come into the cockpit, but I mean, we're not out here in foul weather gear or anything. What about you, Mateee, the proper pirate now with your new tattoo? Hey, see, I the score with. With 15 fathoms to go. And my f***ing iPad is frozen. <laughs> What's up with the, the weather here? Uh, this should... This kind of spinning high that we're in, it should last probably till tonight, and then it's going to slowly start to drop off. By probably tomorrow morning we're going to be in a calm again. And then it'll all start over. And then we'll get hit with southerlies again. And then, yeah, it's just constantly these spiraling systems coming through. So we'll have a calm and then we'll get hit by southerlies again. But after this next southerly low, it looks like it fills in really nicely. So well, let's hope that holds, because that'll take us all the way in if that holds good and we don't have any more of these systems. And what's but our position right now? We're at like 36 north, almost 37 north, and like 57 west. Oh. So we're making really good speed in progress. Like really good. Yo! Like a rodeo. Yeah. Wait, this is stronger than what it predicted. Yeah. It was probably supposed to be 25 tops and it's, I've seen 35, 40s. So Ruben. Yeah. You're up buddy. Sweet. Um, this is a really important watch to be close to the helm. So either sit here or here. Yeah. If the autopilot happens to fail, like if it gets overloaded or something breaks on it, you want to be in control of the helm. And then um, obviously the wind is coming from the same place it was last time when you were hand steering. So if, yeah, if the autopilot fails, I mean you should probably just hand steer for a bit to get a feel of what it's like in conditions like this. And then just hand steer. The worst thing you can do is overcorrect too far to starboard, turn way downwind, and then accidentally drive. So if the boat luffs up into the wind and flaps, better it's better than going. than going the other way. So it just just do it like that. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Better just hand steering. Yeah. Okay. So what she wants to do now, the weather's strong. Yeah. Is really turn up into the wind. Weather. Right. Yeah. So just. Think about that and think about when it happens. It's usually when you see a swell hits, yeah. the boat turns sideways, yeah. and then it cuts. So those are like yeah. the three things that happen that happen at once. See, so now it wants to turn? Yeah. Now, yeah. Then, yeah. Then you gotta correct it. Go, go more, keep going. Which way? Which way? Yeah, correct it. There you go. Let's 
so weird because you don't have any reference points. Yeah. That's strange. Don't ever turn too far to port. Because then it'll overcorrect real far. If you want it to come back to port, just keep it centered. And then it'll do it on its own. So like if you notice what the autopilot does, there's always like one or two bars of, yeah. of weather helm, right? Yeah. So if you kind of just do what that's doing right there, you wait for it to come up properly on its own, and then you just fight it, give it one bar, and then back. And then it'll come back on its own eventually. If I were you, I'd put my head out and get some, get some real fun sailing. But I was, I'm tempted. Do it, man. Yeah, I want to see what's going to happen. You can okay. splash in the face. You gotta, you gotta be wet. Okay. Woo! Alright, uh, stand up. How about? What kind of wind angle should I keep it at? 60? No, a pair of probably like 50, 45 or 50. Of course, on the Gulf Coast, it looks super calm out here, but it's blowing 35 or so, 30, and a gusting high 30s. Woo! At the end of each day, there comes a point when it's time to say goodbye to the sun and hello to the darkness that engulfs Delos. You're tired but need to be alert and are usually the only one awake. You are 100% responsible for the safety of Delos and her crew, which can be a little nerve wracking at times when it's completely dark in the middle of the ocean, with nothing but a little bit of moonlight to guide your way. But the pressure of this situation makes me feel hyper alert and very tuned in with everything that's going on around me. And it's in these moments that everything else just seems to slip away, leaving you with a clear mind and a rare sense of perspective that can only be found way out here. I was just thinking about how cool of an experience Nightwatch is out here because it's just you and Delos. And it's kind of a, a really personal time for you to be with the boat. It might sound kind of weird, but you get to know her in a different way when it's just the two of you. And of course, the nature situation is some of the most stunning I've ever seen in my entire life. I really, really enjoy the peacefulness of these moments and you know, when you remove yourself from society for a week or two at a time and don't have internet and you're not connected to your friends or your family or the entire world really, um, things change. <laughs> and when you're not expelling that energy on kind of managing all the stimulus of the outside world, that energy begins to focus elsewhere. Right now on Delos, it feels so calm and so well balanced, I guess in, in every sense of the term balanced. Like Delos, the boat is sailing along at like seven knots. We've got 15 knots of wind on the beam and we're just cruising along right on course straight for the Azores. The vibe on Delos right now is really, really good. All the crew are like getting along, becoming a family. Who knows what's gonna happen next, but taking this trip has really, really opened up a lot in my brain as far as 
what's possible and what I want to do and what the future holds. And I've never thought more seriously about having my own boat than I have in the past month, I'd say. So who knows what the future holds. But for now, I'm just going to take it all in and be grateful for this time we have as a random group of people coming together and like becoming a family. What's up Delos Tribe? Check out these sweet new flags that we got made. We heard your guys' request that you wanted some, but first we had to get one on Delos and torture test it to make sure that it was up to the test. And it is, so there's a fresh new batch waiting in the shop for you today. <laughs> we found a soccer ball in the middle of the ocean. Got a ball! Soccer ball in the middle of the ocean. What's the odds of that? That's so crazy. I think they're floating for a long, 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 unless it fell off of like a, maybe some people on a cargo ship were playing soccer Soccer right and kicked it too far. What? Ah! No! Ah! Yes! Go, 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 go! Attempt two. Yeah. Hit the stern. Okay. No! The roll! <laughs> Are you drawing a d Yeah. Blue, don't let him draw a d Stay still. I don't think he knows what an anchor looks like. I'm trying my best. <laughs> my system's not faulty. I look in the basket and the bread has gone moldy. The wind is blowing hard and it's kind of getting coldy. But hold up. Look around. Don't fold up. Let the reef out. Oh, your new little brother was so gangster. Right? I didn't know that. <laughs> Business in the front. Party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> like it? I like it a lot. <laughs> 